Hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about first the memory hierarchy and then we will have a brief introduction regarding how the different memory units are interfaced with the processor. So, let's get to learning. Now the term hierarchy, if put simply, means ranking. Also ranking can be done based on different parameters. For an instance, if we consider Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy according to the release dates, Batman Begins comes first, then the Dark Knight, and finally the Dark Knight Rises. But if Rotten Tomatoes Tomato Meter is considered, the Dark Knight is on the top, having the freshness of 94%. Because, honestly, Heath Ledger just rocked it, right? Then comes the Dark Knight Rises, and finally, Batman Begins. Now this ranking remains the same if Metacritic scores are also considered. Similarly, based on different aspects, the memory storages can also be ranked. If we consider access time and size, we can rank the memory units like this. Registers are made up of flip-flops and are embedded within the processor itself. Therefore, time to access them is the least. The SRAM caches are next, followed by the DRAM main memory, Last but not least, the secondary memory storages. However, in terms of cost and usage frequency, this hierarchy is reversed. I mean, as we move up in this, the cost and the frequency of usage increases. In our previous discussion, we already understood that the processor is very fast and the sole purpose of having the memory hierarchy is to bridge the speed mismatch between the fast processor to slow memory, that too at a reasonable cost. Now coming to memory interfacing, it is a part of computer organization, which deals with the way of connecting various levels of memory units, especially to the processor, also to the IO peripherals. Generally, the speed of the processor is counted using the unit MIPS. Some call it MIPS. It stands for million instructions per second. And our goal is to try to feed the processor with those many instructions from the memory in a faster yet cost-effective approach. Let's try to understand various levels of the memory. If I say information at nth level is a subset of the information available in the n plus 1th level, it means if the processor refers to the nth level memory for something, may that be any instruction or data, if that's found there only, we term it as hit. Otherwise, it's called a miss and the processor then goes to the n plus 1th level, that is the next level, to look for the same. So in case of a miss, the time taken to look for the information in both nth level and n plus 1th level should be considered. However, it's not always the case. It actually depends on the way the interfacing has been done. Let's dig a bit deeper. Now generally, interfacing is done in two ways. The following illustrations will help us understand these ways. Way 1. All the different memory levels are simultaneously connected to the processor and whenever the processor wants some information, it can look for it in all the different levels side by side. Here, the processor is connected to three memory units of different levels. Now for the time being, let's call them M1, M2 and M3. Assuming the access time for these are T1, T2 and T3, also T1 is less than T2, which in turn is less than T3. Now, let's presume that for a program or a set of instructions, the hit ratio of the M1 and M2 are H1 and H2 respectively. Alright, now the question that you must be having is, what on earth is hit ratio, right? Now we already know that during execution, the set of instructions are brought into the main memory from the non-volatile secondary storage. Also the frequently accessed portions are stored inside the cache. Let's just say there are 100 instructions in a program and it's permanently stored inside the last level of memory hierarchy, that is the secondary memory. Suppose from those 100, 80 of them are brought into the main memory. In that case, the hit ratio would be 80 by 100 that is 0.8 or 80%. This means during execution there is 80% chance for the processor of getting the required instructions inside the main memory. Now as the last level is nothing but the permanent storage, there is the hit ratio is naturally 100%. So we don't really bother about it because if the program isn't there, there is no way for the processor to execute it. It's like if we don't really have the audio file, how on earth we can play it? 
So coming back to our illustration, with all these informations, if we now try to find out how much time is needed on an average to find out an information in this organization, which is by the way popularly known as effective or average memory access time, the formula is as follows. Let's understand this formula so that we don't really have to memorize it. So there is H1% chance of finding the instruction inside M1. And this is the time taken to access M1. Now 1 minus H1% chance is also there that the processor may not find the instruction required inside M1, which is called the miss rate or miss ratio of M1. For those cases, the processor will look inside the next level that is M2, which has H2% chance of having the instructions in it. Also, the time taken to access M2 is T2, hence 1 minus H1 multiplied by H2 and T2. So finally, there are 1 minus H2% chance of not finding the instructions inside M2. That is the miss ratio or the miss rate of M2 is 1 minus H2. Therefore, 1 minus H1 multiplied by 1 minus H2 that is considering all the chances where we can't find the required instructions either in M1 or in M2. In that case, we will have to look for it inside M3, that is the last level. And the time required to access M3 is T3. Hence, 1 minus H1 multiplied by 1 minus H2 multiplied by T3. Now remember, the memory devices of the different levels are connected to the processor simultaneously and that's why this all will take place parallelly. Now the second way is to interface the memory units level-wise as this. That means, if the required instruction can't be found in M1, then the processor will go and look for it inside the next level, that is M2. And if it is not even there, the seeking process will continue to the next level. So in that case, the formula will become this. Because here the processor is not simultaneously connected to all the memory units. Also, if the processor is looking for an instruction in the n plus 1th level, that means it already has looked for it in the nth level or the previous level and it couldn't find it there. That's why both the access times are being considered. Well, that was all about memory hierarchy and the different ways the memory interfacing takes place. In the next session, we will try to solve a few numerical problems associated to this concept to have a lucid understanding. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.